Hello everybody, this is Mike History 2, and I will be talking about the spread of Buddhism. So, for those of you who are subscribed to my channel, obviously you guys need no introduction, but I'm sure some of you are here for the very first time, and the reason for that is because I am doing a, this video in collaboration with Ali Bai. So Ali Bai, for those of you who don't know, is an awesome history YouTuber. Um, he makes history videos, but more specifically mapping videos. And I would definitely recommend you to check him out, but I'll talk a lot more about this and about his channel at the end. So stay tuned for the entire video. I'm sure you'll find it interesting. Buddhism is the fourth largest religion on the planet, with over half a billion followers, or over 7% of the world population. Now this video won't explain the teachings of Buddhism, since this is a history channel, but I believe most of you have a basic idea of what Buddha Buddhism is anyways. As we all know, Buddhism is of course named after its founder, Gautama Buddha, a philosopher and religious leader born in Lumbini in the Shakya Republic, now in Nepal around 480 BC. Starting around 445 BC, he traveled the Gangetic Plain of central India, teaching Buddhism and sending his disciples to spread the religion, urging them to teach in the local languages. By the time he died around 400 BC, in Kushinagar Mala, now in India, there were thousands of Buddhists. The first Buddhist council was held right after Gautama Buddha's death, presided over by Maha. Siapa, sorry for not pronouncing that very well. One of his most important disciples at Rajagra, now Rajgir, India, supported by Ajatashatru, the Haryanka Emperor. So Ashoka, the Mauryan Emperor from around 268 to 232 BC, invaded Kalinga in around 260 BC, killing thousands of people and animals and taking just as many captive. Now, after feeling guilty for his extremely bloody war conquest, he converted to Buddhism, making it the official religion, and after this, Buddhism spread from the Gangetic Plain to the rest of India. Due to this, he created hospitals and wells, abolished torture, royal hunting trips, and possibly even execution. He built stupas across the Mauryan Empire, urging people to respect animal life and to follow Dharma. Under his reign, the worship of stupas, large mounds containing the relics of saints or Gautama Buddha, began with it being believed that this would bring blessings to the worshipper. Ashoka sent missionaries as far west as the Greek countries, particularly the Greco-Bactrian kingdom, and as far south as Sri Lanka. He convened the third Buddhist council around 250 BC at Pataliputra, now Patna, India, presided over by Mughaliputta Tisa, a Buddhist monk and scholar. Now let's focus on the spread of Buddhism throughout the Greek countries. Buddhist missionaries were sent to Antiochus II Theus, the Seleucid king, Ptolemy II Philadelphus, the pharaoh of Egypt, Antigonus II Gonatas, the king of Macedonia, Magus of Cyrene, the king of Cyrene, and Alexander II of Epirus, king of Epirus. Meanwhile, in Sri Lanka, it was Ashoka's son, Mahinda, who had become a Buddhist monk uh, who spread the religion there, while his daughter, Sanghamita, was the first nun there. They converted Devanapiyatisa, of Anuradhapura, the king of Anuradhapura, and many of his nobles as well. Mahayana, one of the three main branches of Buddhism, was established between around 150 BC and around 100. This version of Buddhism emphasizes bodhisattva, or attaining Buddhahood and upaya, gaining enlightenment through your own will, meaning that even if your path isn't correct, it is still a legitimate way to become enlightened. It was associated with the Mahayana Sutras, a group of scriptures accepted by the Mahayana that are considered to have been taught by Gautama Buddha and then memorized and recited by his disciples, and in particular, Ananda, one of his ten main disciples. These sutras taught that there are countless other Buddhas who were preaching in other universes, and eventually Mahayana Buddhists began to venerate Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who had transcended this universe. Although starting off as a minority by the 7th century, half of Indian Buddhists were Mahayana Buddhists. Around 187 BC, Brihadratha Maurya became the Mauryan emperor, but two years later, Pushyamitra Shunga, one of his generals, proclaimed himself as the Shunga king. Five years later, in 180 BC, he assassinated Brihadratha Maurya, ending the Mauryan empire and establishing the Shunga kingdom, which, unlike the Mauryan empire, was Hindu, 
and would last until 73 BC. Now during that time, many Buddhist monks abandoned the Ganges Valley. But during this period, around 190 BC, Demetrius I of Bactria, the Greco-Bactrian king, invaded India and established the Indo-Greek kingdom. Unlike the Shunga kingdom, Buddhism flourished in the Indo-Greek kingdom, in particular under Menander I, who might have been a Buddhist and certainly helped that religion. During the first century BC, Greco-Buddhism emerged with the first statues of Buddha being created. And this is seen by how these early depictions of Buddha had him have Greek clothes, curly Mediterranean hair, and realistic features. In 30, Kujula Kadphises established the Kushan Empire, which soon adopted Greco-Buddhist culture but turned it into its own version known as Gandharan Buddhism, a mix of Greek, Iranian, and Indian culture, with the Gandharan Buddhist texts being written between the 1st and 3rd centuries, which are the oldest Buddhist texts in the world. Kanishka, who ruled between 120 and 144, built stupas and monasteries in his capital in Peshawar, and due to him opening trade routes began the spread of Buddhism along the Silk Road. He also convened a major council in Gandhara, or Kashmir, inviting over 500 monks to compile commentaries on the Abhidharma, Buddhist texts written around the 3rd century BC, which contained reworkings of doctrines in Buddhist sutras. Around 56, Khotan was established as a Buddhist country in modern Tajikistan and western China and helped spread Buddhism along the Silk Road. Thanks to Khotan, along with the Kushan Empire, Buddhism spread to most of Central Asia. These Central Asians then spread the religion to China, with the first translators such as An Shigao, uh, Zi Qian, and Kang Zhengkai being from that area. Although Persia would eventually conquer much of Central Asia starting in 226, and despite being Zoroastrian, it would tolerate Buddhism. However, beginning in 633, the Muslim conquest of Persia that would last until 654 would bring a new religion, Islam, to Central Asia. Especially after the establishment of Ghazna around 977, Buddhism would start to decline in the region. Now, back in India, during the late 3rd century, the Gupta kingdom was founded with kings such as Kamara Gupta I, who ruled between 414 and 455, supporting and expanding the Nalanda Monastery, which became the most important Buddhist university in India for centuries, being a center of the study of the theory of knowledge, or Pramana. After the death of Harsha, who ruled over northern India between around 606 and around 647, the Gangetic Plain saw the rise of many small countries, which would eventually be reunited by the Pala Empire between around the 750s and around 1162. The Pala emperors were Buddhists as well and built many universities, such as Vikramashila, Somapura Mahavir, Mahavihara, Odantapuri, uh, and Odantapuri were linguistics, medicine, astronomy, music, painting, sculpture, and music. I'm sorry, I said music toy. And sculpture were promoted. They also spread the religion to Tibet, Bhutan, and Sikkim. Nevertheless, Buddhism would start to decline in the 13th century due to the Delhi Sultanate's conquest of the Buddhist strongholds of Bihar and Bengal, and a slow revival of Hinduism in the region, and would never become a major religion in India again, with the only Buddhist left going to Sri Lanka or the Himalayas. Now let's look at East Asia. Buddhism arrived in China by 50, but didn't start to take much of an impact there until the 6th dynasty's period between 220 and 589. The Kushan monk Lokaksema began translating Mahayana texts into Chinese in Luoyang between 178 and 189. Buddhism continued to grow during the early Tang dynasty, which ruled China between 618 and 907. In 627, the Chinese monk Swan Song went to India on a pilgrimage, and by the time he returned in 645, he'd brought back 657 Buddhist texts along with relics and statues. He then established a translation school in the Chinese capital of Chang'an, now Xi'an, but eventually the Tang turned against Buddhism, which manifested itself in the great anti-Buddhist persecution in 845, ordered by Emperor Li Chen, better known as Emperor Wu Song of Tang. Nevertheless, with the ascent of the Song Dynasty in 960, Buddhism experienced a golden age, with Chinese Buddhism influencing Korea and Japan, and the entire Chinese canon being printed. Although this ended with a Mongol conquest in 1279, Buddhism became the official religion of China and would continue that way until 1368. Buddhism arrived in Korea, meanwhile, around 372, and during the 6th century, many Korean monks went to China and India to study Buddhism. 
and during the north-south states period between 698 and 926, it became popular and continued to be popular in Goryeo, which was founded in 918 and soon unified all of Korea. However, in 1392, Joseon conquered Goryeo, and since its kings were Confucian, Buddhism began to decline as monasteries were closed or confiscated. Nevertheless, Korean Buddhism did have a legacy since it was Korean monks who introduced the religion to Japan in the 6th century. Emperor Shomu, who ruled between 724 and 749, ordered the buildings of temples, and many such temples and monasteries were built in the capital Nara. Buddhism also influenced the pre-existing religion in Japan, Shinto. Buddhism arrived meanwhile in Tibet during the 7th century as a mix of Mahayana and new Buddhist denomination called Vajrayana. They promoted new practices such as using mantras and sharanis, sacred chants that were believed to have spiritual power, mudras, symbolic poses, and mandalas, geometric configurations of symbols, and the Buddhist texts. There became the Tibetan Buddhist canon. Although resisted at first, it began to thrive under King Ralpachan, who ruled between 817 and 836. And even though his son Langdarma, Langdarma tried to repress it during his six-year reign, it would eventually become the main religion. And so that brings us to Southeast Asia. So Buddhism may have arrived in early Vietnam in Vietnam as early as the third or second century BC or possibly during the 1st or 2nd century. What we know for sure was that Mahayana Buddhism had arrived in Vietnam by the 2nd century. Buddhism was already established in Funan in southern Southeast Asia by the 5th century. The Khmer Empire that ruled over most of Southeast Asia between 802 and 1431 had Hinduism and Buddhism as its main religions, and many Hindu and Buddhist temples were built. In Myanmar, Anurata, the king of Burma between 1044 and 1077, converted to Theravada Theravada Buddhism, and built many Buddhist temples in his capital at Pagan. Although the Mongol invasions weakened Buddhism in the area, by the time Martaban was established in 1287, Theravada, Theravada Buddhism became the main religion in Myanmar, and even after its fall in 1552, continued its presence as the official religion of Burma under the Taungu dynasty, which came to power in 1510. In Thailand, Buddhism became the dominant religion after Ram Kamhayeng, the king of Sukhothai between 1279 and 1298 made Theravada Buddhism the official religion. And this was reinforced by its adoption by Ayutthaya, which ruled Thailand between 1350 and 1767. In Indonesia, Kalinga, a kingdom in Java between the 6th and 7th centuries, had a large Buddhist presence. In Srijaya, uh, or Srivijaya, I forgot, an empire in Sumatra between around 650 and 1377 adopted Buddhism, and once it conquered Java and the Malay Peninsula spread the religion to those regions as well. Their capital, Palembang, was a major center of Buddhism and had many monasteries. Although the Medan kingdom that lasted between 732 and 1006 in Java was a major rival of Sri Vijaya, it also adopted Mahayana Buddhism and was famous for the amount of temples it built. Buddhism in Indonesia continued to flourish in Majapahit that ruled over almost all of Southeast Asia between 1293 and 1527. But after this, Islam replaced Buddhism as the main religion in Southeast Asia, and would replace it in Indonesia, Brunei, and Malaysia, starting in the 12th or 13th century and accelerating in the 15th century with the expansion of Malacca between 1400 and 1511. Now, of course, Buddhism's history doesn't end in the 16th century, but I think that this is an appropriate end to the video because this video is about the spread of Buddhism and that's when Buddhism kind of stops spreading. So how's the religion today? As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are over half a, million, half a billion Buddhists today and Buddhism is the main religion in Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Mongolia, Singapore, and Taiwan. But having the strongest presence in Southeast Asia being the main religion in Myanmar, Thailand, and Cambodia. Although not being the dominant religion, Buddhism still has a major presence in China and Japan, and a minor presence in Laos and South Korea. However, like many religions, it, does have a, it doesn't have a large following in its original country, India, with Buddhists only making 0.7% of the population, and although making up 10.7% in Nepal, which is Gautama Buddha's birthplace, it isn't close to the majority either. And so, as I said, this video was a collaboration with Ali Bai, so Ali Bai is my favorite YouTuber. I know you might think I'm just saying this because he made a collaboration, but he honestly has 
always been my favorite YouTuber. I've been subscribed to him since 2017, way before this channel even existed. And in fact, he was the one who inspired me to make my own channel. I'm telling you guys, if you aren't subscribed to him, I would definitely go subscribe to him. Uh, he's made the most impressive videos I've ever seen in my life. If you're really into maps, then that's that should definitely be your thing. Um, and yeah, I'm, you should go watch his video, obviously, about the spread of Buddhism. He made a map about it. Um, and yeah, apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this. If you are new, please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I would really appreciate that. Uh, and go watch my old videos if those interest you. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys soon. Also, quick little side note. Um, almost all of the maps you saw in my video were made by Oli Bai. So, yeah, once again, his without his videos, I wouldn't even be able to make mine. Um, and also, for those of you who are already subscribed to me and aren't coming from his channel, um, it was his birthday yesterday. Um, so please uh, help him out and subscribe to him. Uh, that would really mean a lot for both of us. And of course, if you're coming from his channel, subscribe to me. Okay, see ya.